Welcome to Why Though the Podcast. <laughs> we did it! Baby! Baby! Welcome to Why Though the Podcast, Destiny. Welcome to Why Though the Podcast, Lizzie. Hi, how are you? I'm pretty good. Good. If you're watching on YouTube, you might recognize us in the exact same positions we were last week. Yep, here we are. We're doing double duty because somebody's leaving me to go to Texas with her family. It's going to go see the super cool solar eclipse. Yeah, as long as it didn't, doesn't rain. I mean, it'll even if it does rain, there'll be some yeah. cool... At this point, when you're listening to this podcast, actually, you will already know if it rained during the eclipse yeah. or not. Because this is happening like a week and a half from today. So, mm-hmm. And the eclipse is happening a week from yesterday. So we're... Um, this is a real future. Oh, this this reminds me of my Smasher Pass. <laughs> I gotta remember. Yeah, I'm gonna write it down. That. I'm not gonna tell you. Well, I'll I'll, I'll tell you guys all the spiel. This is why though the podcast, the podcast where we turn Lizzie Acker's critically acclaimed, in my opinion, advice column into a podcast. If you'd like advice for your life, you can go to organlive.com slash why though and read all her old columns and listen to old episodes of this very podcast that you're listening to, and she's really good at giving advice. So and Destiny's really good at giving advice too, and that's why yeah, we you. talk about it together. We sure do. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, as you know, Destiny, and as our loyal listeners will know, we have now have a go- Google form, so you can send me anonymous questions. Um, yes. Because sometimes people, even like, even an email, even me knowing your email is too much, and I get it. You don't want me to know anything about you, so. I would love, I love it when people send me anonymous questions and, um, I did make, I don't know, it was a mistake, a bit of a mistake. I put it in the Portland Reddit last week. Um, I was like, Hey, I have an advice column, you know, and people on Reddit are not always the coolest. Sometimes they are some, I've found some cool stuff on Reddit, like cool stories and stuff. Met some nice people. However, they did flood my form with just yeah. non sequiturs reddit is you know? so fickle when it comes to internet culture i have also found some really great stories i i don't know not to brag but i wrote the original story about mike bennett and it was picked up by bbc and Whoa. which was impressive for me and yeah uh, i found him on reddit at the very okay, yeah. sort of beginning of his career and um yeah, so I found amazing people, amazing stories, but a lot of trolls. Yeah. A lot of trolls. of trolls. Yeah, I once met a guy who took me on a kayak trip down the Columbia Slough for a story oh, cool. on Reddit. Cool. Yeah, very cool. But yeah, also they uh, have opinions. Yeah, y'all know who you yeah. are who are doing stuff right. in bad faith on Reddit. And there's lots of you, but some of y'all are yeah. cool and you can stay. And also, <laughs> like, I really want you to send me anonymous questions. Some of the stuff you guys sent me. I know it was made up and not even interesting and not even a question. Yeah, if you're going to make something insults, up, make it interesting. Right. And if you're going to insult me, make it original. Okay. Yeah. Sure. We anyway, did get one, though. This, we did. I did get one. <laughs> and I, so thank you to this person who sent us a real question. And and when I say real, I don't mean this really happened. I hope it did. I have no way of verifying that. I mean real and that it is a thing that could happen. Yeah. It it seems like a question that someone is asking in, in good faith, like they want some help and we are here to offer that help. We sure are. Are you ready to get into it? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. It goes, dear Lizzie, I am single and I want to be in a relationship. Unfortunately, I have a hard time finding people who are attracted to me, but every once in a while I will go to a bar or club and meet someone who is invariably they are in an open relationship with someone else. Despite this, I tend to spend the rest of my night with them because of the validation I get. How can I balance my wanting to feel desired while not wasting all my time with people who are not single? Signed, single, but very ready to mingle. This is an interesting question. And I mean, we come at this from different perspectives, I would say. I should note I'm married to somebody I met on Tinder, by the way. Love that. (laughs) Um, we've been together for almost 10 years now. Um, Desi, are you single? I'm single. Yeah. Um, I, but I feel like there's something in this question that I want to stop on. 
Hmm. which is this this letter writer and i don't know the gender age i know nothing about this letter writer again anonymous form so i legitimately i can't even try to draw a conclusion from the email address you know what i mean um but the question they're looking for someone who's attracted to them this seems like a person who's really looking for outside validation instead of some sort of meaningful connection honestly like what do you want Mm -hmm. you it sounds like that you just want someone to say you look hot which i'm gonna say may not be all you want in a relationship maybe you know maybe i mean (laughs) and you can find lots of people who are gonna say you're hot whether they think it's true or not because they want to have sex with you um they will say whatever they want to have sex with you if that's what they want to do um but uh, so i guess i'm interested i want this letter writer if they're listening and i haven't responded to it i just read this today so i haven't really thought much about it but um to think about like what do you really want do you want to be not alone is that it just like your only thing is like i don't want to be alone um do you want someone to hang out with who likes you (laughs) or do you just want to feel happier? Because I don't think you need to be in a relationship to have connection and feel happy at all. So I guess I don't really know what this person wants. I don't know. What is your first original initial thoughts? My initial thoughts is this, this is giving very um, insecure early twenties and we were all there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, but I, I need you and the listeners to deeply understand that I know that this is difficult mm-hmm. and we have all been through or are currently going through some phase of insecurity. It happens. Totally. The world is designed to make us feel bad about ourselves, yeah. in, regardless of your gender or non-gender or whatever, um, because it we're all cogs in a capitalist machine and that's fine. Uh, right. If you can't find the validation that you're seeking from other people, from yourself, you will probably not be that happy, even if you find a relationship. Yeah, definitely. If you're like out I, there, I don't... like casting a net, trying to find a relationship, because as you said, you spend time with people who are essentially wasting your time, uh, mm-hmm. or in, you know, because you aren't interested in being in an open relationship, um, mm-hmm. because you feed off that validation, like you got to get good with yourself. And I say this yeah. having grown up fat. So I do understand the struggle, right? I yeah, mean, I even mean, if you're like, not fat, you understand the struggle, but I just mean, you know, I'm going to put that just because that's my anecdotal experience. Yeah. Like, I don't think you're ever going to find as long as you're looking for your happiness and validation from an outside source. You might find it temporarily. I'm not saying you right, won't find it, right. but um, it waxes and wanes, you know, like mm-hmm. you don't, and honestly, your validation from yourself waxes and wanes. But if you can yeah. understand your own inherent worth, it will allow you to get over these, you know, peaks and valleys of how feeling, you know, like of external validation. And also, yeah, again, this is why I want you to ask yourself, what are you looking for? Because if you're looking to hook up with someone, then, I mean, who cares if they're in an open relationship? You know, if you're if you're just looking to have that kind of validation that someone wants to sleep with you, mm-hmm. and I don't know why I'm going with that, except that you're saying you're meeting them at bars and clubs and you're hanging out with them for the whole night. That's what I read it as. And I also am not judging on that. Mm-hmm. Been there. Okay. I have definitely been there. But I, now I'm 41, and I would say that trying to find your worth in other people is just a losing game. And once you figure out that what, like, what you really want, if you want to be in a relationship, I mean, I think what you, what is good about a relationship is finding someone who makes you laugh who you like being around who you don't you know whose voice doesn't make you want to poke your eyes out like who who's fun to be around a friend like a good friend who you also feel attracted to (laughs) but um 
that you can spend time with that makes that you know that doesn't make you feel bad about yourself but also like that's not where you're gonna get your self-worth yeah and I like what you're saying about like you got to figure out what you want because I am a person who categorizes relationships differently than a lot of people Mm -hmm. um I have never been in a long-term romantic relationship not because I'm abhorrent and nobody wants me but because Mm -hmm. I don't I don't really count it. So like the thing that distinguishes a romantic relationship typically, right. Mm-hmm. Is that you are good friends with that person and y'all also have sex and right. the distinguishing whether it's open or closed is up to you. Right. You seem like you're right. more interested in like a monogamous relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, I, to me, my friends, uh, mm-hmm. my, you know, my closest friends, I would say there is nothing that distinguishes our relationship as different besides the fact that we don't have sex. We don't agree to have sex. Right. So, which is, you know, great, fine. Uh, uh, So I treat my friends like I would treat anybody else who's extremely close to me and the validation that Mm -hmm. they give me, you know, the way Mm -hmm. that you do with friends, like, Mm -hmm. or loved ones, even it makes me feel great because they're so close. So like, if you are seeking this validation and Maybe you're not looking for a romantic relationship. Maybe right. you are just looking for Maybe like you need some friends. You're close, you know, you need close friends. You need to forge yeah. relationships that make you feel good about you, that you can put mm-hmm. your energy into to make them feel good about them. The right. distinguishing factor here appears to be sex to me. Mm-hmm. And right. I guess you have to decide how important element. that is to you. Right. Uh, well, yeah. I would say I'm attracted to my friends. Right. But yeah, I don't. Yeah. But, but like, for me, like I, I don't, I don't want to have sex with them. But you know right, what I mean. Like it, like it is different for everybody. That, like this, this writer wants to be seen as attractive, mm-hmm. which That's I true. think, I think, like if if you're chasing that, mm-hmm. being attractive, quote unquote, whatever that means. First of all, it is. I mean, it means different things to different people. It is absolutely. You're you're never gonna be as attractive as you want to be i mean if that's your goal i think you're going to find yourself unhappy you know i think and i also think if you're looking for people to spend time with who you like to build these like strong relationships whether you're friends or you know in a romantic relationship i would say stop going to bars and clubs and looking for it not Mm -hmm. saying stop going to bars and clubs right I just don't think that's where you're going to find what you're looking for. I think you need to figure out what it is you're looking for for first and then cultivate the areas in your life where you already have love or where you already Mm -hmm. find joy. You know, like, what is it you like to do? Do that. Find the people who want to do that and do that with them. Or like, who are your friends? Like, put your heart into your friendships, be present in your friendships. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, whether you do or do not find a partner, uh, in that sense, it's, you know, I have plenty of, you know, plenty of perfectly happy people who are single and I know plenty of perfectly miserable people who are married. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like it's not, it is not necessarily about that relationship. It's about how you, who you are and how you feel about yourself. Totally. Um, I also think you should maybe shift the way that you think about this. Well, in many ways, as, as Liz <laughs> just said, but also um, I think it's wild of you to say, I don't find many people who are attracted to me. How mm-hmm. do you know? Right. Because people aren't start, like stomping up to you and being like, I want, I think you're so hot. Like, let's run away into the sunset. You know, like you can't put words into people's mouths. And if Mm -hmm. you're interested in somebody and you're also not saying anything, they could be thinking the same thing that you're, you know what I mean? Like it it does require a little bit of vulnerability to tell somebody that you're into them. Some people Mm -hmm. just aren't ready for that. And yeah. it doesn't mean that they're not into you. And I'm not saying you should also assume that all these people that you're around are just into you. I just mean like, you know, don't, don't close the door before you know mm-hmm. what the deal is because yeah, you're going and also, to a bar yeah. and strangers are into you, you know, like, do you, are you saying that people aren't into you in the way intimate way that you're looking for or mm-hmm. sh- only strangers are into you because they want to have sex? Like what right. differentiates being quote unquote into you? Right. 
Yeah, and it's also, it's really not like a numbers game, honestly. Like, right. you don't need everyone to be attracted to you. <laughs> you like, you don't. And that might not even be preferable. <laughs> like, you will find, if you're, you know, trying to be authentically yourself, I think you'll find people who are attracted to that. You know, kind of like Destiny saying, like, I think my friends are attractive. Yeah, I think all of my friends are beautiful because they're people I love and I, I know who they are. Mm-hmm. And I don't think, and I think, like, if you can get, I'm not saying that there's, you know, no place for physical attraction. There absolutely is a place mm-hmm. for that. But I think when you widen your idea of what that even means, mm-hmm. The world just opens up to you. And also, like, you, you, when you're saying, like, I can't find people attracted to me, it makes me think you also probably have a very slim idea of what's attractive to you, like, who you want to be attracted to you. Mm -hmm. And um, I also, you know, like, I spent my 20s absolutely, you know, in relationships, in and out of relationships with absolutely unavailable people, (laughs) people that were not available to me in the way I wanted them to be. Um, And, you know, sometimes they were giving me lots of validation (laughs) and then sometimes they weren't, you know, and um, I think when I got a little older and had a little more experience and and finally met someone who was available to me mm-hmm. it was a bit like jarring i think for the first few months of my relationship with my husband i was like like what's your problem <laughs> you know like what what is the other shoe that's going to drop here like what is your game um but yeah you know when i met him i was like he's too young for me blah 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 all this stuff he's 5 years younger than me <laughs> but I don't know. I just think if you can open up your idea of what it is that you want and figure it out, it's a lot more likely you're going to find it. Because this letter reads to me right now like a young person who just doesn't know what they want. Yeah, like you're not a round peg trying to fit into a square hole. I mean, I think you kind Mm -hmm. of are right now, right? I think you're looking for connections in maybe the wrong places and not because those aren't great places to meet people. They're not Mm -hmm. great places to like start relationships really because it is, it does set up, uh, has a a casualness that is bigger than you or I, or it's just like the culture. Um, And also like you don't necessarily want to have alcohol. Oh yeah, right. Uh, but you will find that, that round hole, so to speak, you know what I mean? And it, you'll <laughs> slot right in, whether that be with your friends that you already have, you know oh, what Destiny, I mean? this is getting <laughs> <laughs> I just mean you will fit in somewhere. I know you'll what you find, mean. I... You'll find somewhere to fit in, whether that's with your friends and you start to find the validation and the happiness that you're looking for there that allows yeah. you to open more doors in the relationship area, which you learn a lot about yourself from your friends or... Mm-hmm. Whether you find this relationship that you're looking for and you realize that, like, oh, somebody who wants me wholly, you know what I mean? Like, not Mm -hmm. just for, like, a night, but they want to talk with me and hang out with me and all that stuff. Like, just leave the doors open. It's going to be okay. Yeah, I think you'll be okay. This is also, like, very normal. (laughs) It it made me really think of being in San Francisco and, like, you know, I was probably if I look at a picture of myself now from this time, like that was the hottest point of my life. You know, I just looked so good. Um, And I just felt like nobody was attracted to me, you know, like I wasn't, which is not true for one thing. (laughs) But the other thing is that it makes you vulnerable to other people, to to people who can, who do like, give you that validation it makes you feel like oh i need i need to take Mm -hmm. this from whoever's going to give it to me because i can't get it anywhere right so you make bad choices (laughs) yeah (laughs) you have you know eight-year-long relationships with unavailable men or whatever yeah um, i'm just saying i'm also i i love like a a little bit of an intellectually mean unavailable man i have shut that in my 30s but in my 20s (laughs) i was very yeah well I met, you can bleep that, mm-hmm. <laughs> met my lovely husband when I was 
32. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say up until a month before that, I was still dabbling. It's hard. It's it's hard. Intellectually mean, unavailable men. And you know what? If you're listening, you know who you are. (laughs) Yeah, it happens. I just want you to know I'm happy. Okay. I'm happy. (laughs) With her husband who (laughs) shall not be named. My husband. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Well, best of luck to you. I hope you get to make it. Let us know. You know what? Send me another message in the anonymous uh, form and tell me how you're doing. Absolutely. Shall we move on to Smash or Pass? Yes, because I wrote down my Smash. You did. Um, Would you like to go first? Yeah, I went first last time, but you know what? I'm doing it again. Yeah. No, you know what? You go first. You go first. Do you have one? Oh, me go first? I do. It's um, okay. it's very simple, though. It's uh, Have mm-hmm. you ever watched the show Bob's Burgers? I haven't watched it, but I know lots about it. You know. It's Cultural. very funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very funny. Yeah. And um, I like background TV while I work, typically, mm-hmm. or background music. It just depends on what I'm mm-hmm. doing. But uh, mm-hmm. I've been watching Bob's Burgers in the background. And it's like one of those shows that I, like, people do this with The Office, where they just turn it mm-hmm. on. Because it doesn't matter when you look up. It's, <laughs> it's very like... funny to do that with The Office. I mean, like, 100% love The Office. and I, But I also love the idea of people working from home with The Office on in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah yeah yeah. the irony like is like we a lot. can't go into an office anymore but um i love jim from the office so yeah i mean he's the worst but i also but he him, sure is I mean. but um this show is just very funny it's very wholesome uh mm-hmm. it's great background tv because you just turn it on and if you happen to look up and catch something it's going to be funny and i've just been having a good time sort of putting that on to uh smooth my brain if you will i love it um, okay, so I know like a long time ago on this podcast, a couple weeks ago, I probably mentioned that my husband and I are rewatching all the Marvel movies in order. Yes. We finally made it to Endgame. It okay. took us four nights to finish watching Endgame. It's a long movie, but it's I so really long. love it. I love I really loved it. I mean, I, a lot of the movies I've seen multiple times because like The Office, we do lots of, you know, comfort <laughs> rewatching. Yeah. Um, and for me, Marvel is just entertainment and doesn't require any sort of deep thinking. Um, you know, sometimes uh, Paul Rudd shows up, so it's great. Um, but Endgame, I remember seeing it. It's funny that it came out in 2019 because it's such a pandemic movie i mean it's like about all of civilization losing half their people for five years like like everything changing is you know i feel like i would teach a college course on this like how did what i mean i know they're like it came out first but it's really pandemic like it's a really pandemic movie you should reach out to david f walker who is a local comic book uh writer Mm -hmm. and also Mm -hmm. um brian michael bendis because they teach at the university of portland they teach uh comic (laughs) Uh, like i would love to give a guest lecture on just yeah yeah um but Um, there is a moment in endgame which i remember very clearly when all of the female superheroes come together and I remember crying in the theater when it happened. And last night I cried again and I'm like, what? It's like so um, obviously manipulative, you know, in a way. Yeah. Lots of male reviewers were like, this is fan service, but yeah, you don't know what it means to me. I know that it's fan service, but I'm also crying. I don't care. I loved it. I love it. There's enough female superheroes here that they're all they can all just like mount up and just save the world anyway love it and game um, is it, it holds up i think so some people might not know that actually lizzie mm-hmm. started engaging with my content because i was making a lot of marvel content so I, was, like, <laughs> I was like very into That's the first phase of marvel um and i mean still into marvel content but um yeah. basically like when i got sick i kind of fell off watching everything so intensely yeah um and uh I love WandaVision. You were writing about. I was doing. doing I was writing about WandaVision. WandaVision. Yeah, I love WandaVision. And um, I would love to. I'm gonna get back into it on my on my own time. But um, I also loved Endgame. I remember seeing it in the theater, Mm -hmm. and I mean, I will cry at anything. I cry at commercials on TV. I'm like, I cry, and I'm fine with it. I used to not be fine with it, but now I'm fine with it. The kid, there was a small child sitting in front Mm -hmm. of me, and he when spoiler from 2019 you guys when peter <laughs> parker turns into dust mm. he went oh no 
Spider-Man. And I just started crying so hard because yeah. I was like, this child's hero just got turned into dust. <laughs> well, that was actually not to like uh, end game. Oh, was that not that end game? Actually, that was yeah, that was the one um, before. Yeah, what's the one before called which we just watched? Um Infinity War. Infinity War, that's right. Yep, 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 yeah, at the end Thanos. of Infinity War. The end of Infinity War is <sighs> Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I just looked it up. Because that's when they April get dusted, right? And then Endgame yeah. is like them dealing with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah. And yeah, so April 2019, I was pregnant. I do remember we watched this in um, at Studio One, the you know that movie theater mm-hmm. where there's like couches and stuff. And it was so long and I was in one position and I was pregnant. I like injured myself. Like Ugh. my hip hurt for like months after that. Horrible. But um, it is long. Yeah. It was so good. I yeah. just... I do have beef with Steve Rogers ending. We can talk about that at some other point. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, we can talk about that. It could be the past. Time travel. How does that work? How okay. does that work? My pass okay. is that. You tell me your pass. So, okay. <laughs> if we're going to do end game passes, yeah. my pass. Yeah. <laughs> that's Steve Rogers who did everything. And he absconded mm-hmm. with Bucky Barnes, his best friend from childhood, went what? on the lam. He was like a criminal. <laughs> the Okay. Safety patrol Steve Rogers became right. a criminal for his best friend and then just decided to leave him to go be in a heteronormative relationship <laughs> from a time where he doesn't even belong anymore. No, thank you. I'm not saying they should I be just, gay. I get it. I get no, people no, yeah. into that. That's fine. It would have been nice if they kissed. Look, it would have been nice if they kissed. Yeah. Would I have been into it? Absolutely. Do I understand <laughs> that that wasn't going to happen in a Marvel movie? Absolutely. Do I think that it is absolutely out of character for Steve Rogers to have abandoned Bucky Barnes with all the things he still has to do? And not just a better Bucky person. Barnes. He abandoned America. Everyone. Everyone. Thanks, Captain America. But my question also, um, I guess it does set up for Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which uh Yeah, Captain America could have been there. Yeah. Um, I mean it's good, but but like I just have lots of time travel questions. Yes. And I feel like you They know, really like, gloss they, over it. <laughs> They do sort of address it. They're like, oh, no, all the time travel movies are wrong. But they don't explain why. Like, how is Steve Rogers? Okay. He goes back to, let's say, what, the 50s? Uh Whenever it is. So they're, like, the same age. He gets old. Um, So then he's also, is he living through the time when Steve Rogers is saving planet Earth multiple times? Like, is he living through the Infinity War endgame? He theoretically did that, though. Like he went he back into time it. and he did it. Allegedly. Did it. Yeah. Some people say that he went back, he like it was him, and other mm-hmm. people are like, oh no, he had to like hide. But there's no way he could hide. Oh uh, yeah, like he And the reason why hidden. he's old he is be because he lives yeah, for a long time old? because he's a super soldier, so Oh yeah, but he's why did he get old? He should have never gotten old. Well they're oh, not they? invincible, they just live okay, for a just really long soldiers. time. Yeah. Anyway, so now this is a Marvel podcast. Um I love it. Great. <laughs> and I think I can safely say both of our passes are um, the complicated questions around Steve Rogers and time travel. And that is a spoiler for a movie that came out in April 2019. So if that's too hard for you, then I... Email us. Yeah. (laughs) Email us. Find my... You can find my Google form. Um, Anyway, next we get to watch uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Great film. The Spider-Man movies are great. Yeah. I feel like Endgame is a real peak, but then... Yeah, I've loved every Spider-Man iteration. I also thought Andrew Garfield was a very charming Peter Parker. Um, I wish that he would have had a little bit of a longer run, as a lot of people do. But mm-hmm. I think Tom Holland really embodies Peter Parker. He's mm-hmm. a great job. Mm-hmm. Um, and Zendaya is great. Oh my God, she's amazing. She, everything she touches turns to gold. She's so lovely. She's amazing. I don't know her as a person, but she seems lovely. Me either. <laughs> but she seems like she's the kind of person where you're like, she's probably a good one. She's you know probably I mean? like, a good person. Like I. <laughs> Also, the kind of like um, celebrity that if you were to meet and they were like really mean to you in person, you'd I would be shattered because I believe that she's not like that. But I just it's like her it's like her like the Florence Pugh of it all. Like I really just feel like they're <laughs> fine. They're fine. Something yeah, about this generation of actors is not as weird as the ones right. that we grew up with that are now really <laughs> weird as adults. They're, they seem weird. They, yeah. They're struggling. They're struggling. Anyway. 
I'm really well, glad for your Marvel rewatch, and I hope that you keep reporting to us about the films that you're enjoying. I will. Yeah. Thank I you. mean, thank God we've gone through the bad Thors. You know, that's all I've got to say. I want to talk about Thor too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then I want to delete it from really... my brain. Yeah, but I can't wait until we get back to the, the shows because I've only watched those once. But I loved WandaVision. Ooh, I really like so Falcon hard to watch. And Winter it makes me cry so much. No, it, it's very sad. Yeah, but um. You yeah, gotta get to the Marvels, so, and you gotta get you gotta watch Miss Marvel. You'll I, love Miss Marvel. Well, that, so that's the thing. I, I've seen the show Miss Marvel. I have. Oh, okay. Um, but we have. I haven't seen the new movie. The Marvels, yeah. With yeah, and I really want to. So that's what we gotta get to. That's I haven't seen point. it either, to be honest. So let me know. Oh, I keep okay. like being like, oh, I'm gonna turn this on, and then I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna pay attention for two and a half hours. Like I got yeah. something to do. But I don't know what we're gonna do when we get to the Eternals, which is really boring. Oh, you didn't like it? No, I found it boring. I just think there are too many characters. Too many characters. Um, it's also mm-hmm. like a pretty terrible comic book, like Guardians of the Galaxy, where yeah. it's just like about space politics and nobody really liked it. So like, let's turn it into <laughs> a movie, except Guardians of the Galaxy is good and funny. Yeah, if they, they made it funny. Um, yeah. Though I do really think Chris Pratt is a bad person, so it makes it harder for me to enjoy him. For sure. Yeah. Well. Well. Thanks for recapping Marvel with you. me. Yeah. <laughs> Happy <laughs> to, as you know. Um, let's talk in a week yeah we'll catch you all next week catch up yeah bye Bye. thank you (laughs) listening to why though the podcast subscribe for weekly episodes wherever you listen to podcasts and don't forget to leave us a five-star review if you're looking for more why though check out my column that comes out every tuesday on oregonlive.com you can support our local journalism by going to oregonlive.com slash pod support